Welcome back, students, to another exciting episode of Folds and Faults. Yeah, Structural Geology, Part 2. Doesn't get much better than that, Mr. It really Z. doesn't. It really doesn't. All right, so uh, today, learning objectives, let's uh, talk about these. Uh, by the end of this segment, you should be able to explain the folding of rocks, including the origin, characteristics, and geographic examples of folding. Also, you should be able to compare the major categories of faults and folds in regards to stress, movement, and plate boundaries. So that's a lot of stuff. Sounds Mr. like this ben. backs up some of the stuff that happened in the last video clip. Yeah, 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 it does. Just taking some of those vocabulary words that uh, Miss Awad and Mr. Uh, Baldwin had gone over, we're going to be using some of those same terms as well. So, um, and, we'll, we'll, and we will be introducing some new vocabulary terms too. Yeah, I think let's do the folds. Let's let them do the faults. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right, terminology of folds. Um, you can see on the screen, um, just like you did in the last video, you have your um, terminology there. These are the words that are vital to your understanding. Now, feel free to flip back um, at any time you need to to kind of flip back to these terms if we mention them and you're trying to remember, like, what's the axis of the fold? This is a really excellent picture that they can exactly. look at to uh, basically see. Now, symmetry, you know, some of these words they've maybe used in uh, health class or something like that, or in biology, I think. Yeah, definitely. And some words like overturn, <clears throat> they may have known from the past. Yeah, but well, we're going to be using them interchangeably throughout the lecture, so feel free to pause the video and go back and take a look at that slide uh, just to make sure that uh, you understand what we're talking about. Sounds like a plan. All right, types of fold. First fold over here. Let's take a look. Syncline. Uh, Downwarping of strata. Older strata are found on the limbs. Younger strata is in the axial region. So a couple of different um, definitions here. Uh, there are a couple of words that we want to have to define maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, what's going on here, Mr. Ben? Well, I would say syncline. I look at the bottom of the letter S, and it reminds me that the very bottom of the syncline is kind of the bottom of the letter S. And so if you were to take some papers and then you were able to fold them down, it kind of likes, makes the bottom of the letter S. So if you looked and saw the letter S, that bottom right there, that's a syncline. Yeah. You know what? Another way that I've actually uh, found really useful to remember this is it's kind of like a smile. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm, definitely. And then I always thought of syncline smile as an easy way to just kind of remember. So if I see a smile, mm -hmm. think about the rock smiling at you, which they should be. Yeah, I like right? that. I think of a syncline. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's Excellent. something. What kind of uh, force or, uh, or stress is actually acting on those rocks? Well, here, you hold that side. And if we push towards each other, oh, wait, that's a compressional? I think so. Mm -hmm. And right. what kind of boundary is that if they come together? I think it's that's a, a convergent boundary. A lot of C words going together, convergent and compressional. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, and we talked about the, the strata itself, and um, we mentioned this briefly in the first unit about, like, relative dating and kind of the, the order of the different layers that are inside the, uh, the rocks here. So as you can see, all these different colors, they all represent different layers of strata. Right? And we can see that the one that's all the way on the bottom is going to be the oldest, and the one that's all the way on the top is going to be the youngest. So if we look at our little model over here, we notice all these different colors. There's some red, that's old, right? Yeah, and then this green that's way up on top is going to be new. And if I push them together, right, we can see that that red is still ends up being the oldest rock here. And over here, you could have some red that's actually higher than the green. Yeah. Hmm. So it almost seems like it breaks a rule where you've got some older actually above the younger. Yeah, it can, and that's getting kind of maybe a little bit ahead of ourselves. Okay, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, the axle region. Uh, this is something that uh, we're going to start talking about symmetry here. right? If I were to draw a line right in the middle right, of this syncline, each side of the syncline is a mirror image of itself. Right? That means that it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Right? Kind of like if you chop, if you look straight down the middle of a person, you have symmetry from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. Let's see our next slide. Ooh, this one looks um, like the letter A. 
Maybe that's yeah. a way you can remember this one. Like, instead of a smile, you've got an A. Yeah, and that's the uh, and that's the anticline. So let's go ahead and look at, take a look at this definition. Um, upwarping of strata. Older strata are found in the axle region. Younger strata are found on the lens. So let's take a closer look at that. Um, all right, so the actual shape of it is opposite of what a syncline would be. But is it the same force? Well, let's see. How do we make the fold going up? Wait, we still compressed it, didn't we? Yeah, we did. So we can kind of compress it, and we can make both. We can make a, a syncline and an anticline. Yeah. So okay. they're both uh, compressional forces, and we've actually um, seen that in what type of plate boundary? It's another C word. Uh, convergent? Yeah, convergent again, just mm -hmm. like uh, we saw with syncline. Excellent. Okay. And uh, do they look like they're symmetrical again if you drew a line right down the middle? Yeah, they do look like they're symmetrical. Mm -hmm. So they this do. fold can be symmetrical like the syncline. Yeah, definitely can. Excellent. Ooh, asymmetrical. Yeah, so um, asymmetrical, either an anticline or a syncline in which one limb is tilted at a different angle than the other. So if we had compressional forces to create, let's say, an anticline. Yeah, you look like you've been working out more yeah, than I, I know. have. Yeah. I don't think I can push that nearly as hard as you can. Look at that. Yeah, and sometimes they don't actually go as even as they were in the pictures from the last slide. Sometimes they get kind of turned or skewed or almost even a little bit on top of each other, and then they're no longer symmetrical anymore. And the axle plane is now on an angle. So more like that. Yeah, exactly. So you pushed harder than me, and so, okay, that changed the angle, and now they're not equal limbs. Yeah, one side of the anticline in this situation is not the same as the other side, and we're going to call that asymmetrical. So, like, when I'm ski club, we go. this would be like a bunny, and this is like a triple black diamond, a lot steeper there than over here, so there's a different angle. Yeah, exactly. Still compressional. Definitely. All right, so types of folds. So we have something called a recumbent fold. This one looks real weird, Mr. Ben. Hmm. What's going on here? We just need like a bigger piece. We might have to. So if you fold something so much that it folds, like you push it so hard towards something, it can like fold over on top of itself. Yeah. So um, kind of like people making dough or something yeah. on the, those cooking shows. That's kind of like a recumbent fold. Yeah, and this is... This doesn't happen in like a school year, does it? No, I mean, think about how hard we had to push last time to move solid rocks all this distance that far to do that. Yeah. And it didn't break. No. So this is still ductile formation. Mm -hmm. So in order to move something that far without breaking, that would have to take a really long time. Yeah, definitely. Because if you moved it fast, it probably would snap. Yeah, 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 definitely. And something else to... Uh... Uh, consider here too is that fold center hmm. right would that be called uh, the axle plane there so you could have a couple yeah you've got a couple axial planes there. so but they're in like totally different directions than what they were in some of the examples we saw before definitely so you kind of have one coming out there and then you got one on your side going out that way yeah definitely all right still uh, compressional right yeah definitely it's all mm -hmm. compressional all right, so now we're ready for our quick mastery check. Wow, we've gotten through this pretty quickly. So uh, for each of these pictures, you want to write down which type of fold is shown there. So right, they should so take a clear, close look there. They should remember like smiles and, and, and the letter A, right? Yeah, they definitely should. Mm -hmm. And then you want to draw a diagram of the fold, label the oldest and the youngest layers. So where would you find those oldest layers? and the youngest layers. And then finally, explain how you knew which layers were oldest and which layers were youngest. Mm. So justify your answer there. How can you explain that? Yeah, we didn't actually show them with the anticline where the oldest and youngest. I think they can do it. What I do you think, think they can figure it out. Mm -hmm. I got Definitely. faith in them. All right, well, thank you very much for uh, segment two, and we'll, uh, we'll probably see you again for segment four. Definitely. All right, have a good night. Good luck with the mastery check, everybody.